Don't worry, miss. Get the trucks! Oh, thank God you're here! Don't worry. Always here to help. And to think firefighters save lives all day long with these trucks. I wish I could see one in reality. Wait a second. I'm in one! Oh God, I'm late! Oh. At your orders, Captain. The truck is ready to go. On your orders. Look at that! We're actually in a real fire station. And there's so many trucks! Woo! It's awesome! Okay, let's go and discover them all. So, this, according to my friend Nick, is a truck that is used when houses collapse. It comes here to reinforce the structure and find people who are stuck under the rubble. Ooh. Ooh. Now, this one is huge. This is a ladder truck or an aerial truck. And this one has a 30 meter long ladder, which is used to save people. Or in apartments, you know, high up in a flat or, you know, people in high places. Wow, it's huge and also strong. Whee! <laughs> Still at the fire station, hi Nick. So, this truck here is in case of air pollution or water pollution, like diesel in the water. Whereas this one is more for factory explosion. So more products, more heavy machinery. Wow! Now this one is for road accidents, so on it there's all the cutters and pliers and stuff needed in order to free people from a trashed and crumpled car. And look, it's charging! That's because you need to keep all that equipment charged up in case of an emergency, of course. Oh, and what's this one over there? <laughs> And of course, you need a boat because sometimes people will have problems on a lake or in a river or even in the sea. And so you need a team ready to get in the boat and hop to the rescue. Let's go. Oh, it's rolling. Now, this truck and the one right here is all about burning houses. If something in town burns, oh, there's an emergency. Ooh, something went down. So, you see, now there's actually an intervention, there's a problem. So they are hopping in the van and they are whoosh, going to save someone's life and make this world better, a bit at a time. Bye guys! Ah, they're the best, I really like them. <laughs> That's awesome! Now, you just saw an ambulance just leaving and going on an intervention. The ambulance is the most used truck. More than 80% of the time they are called on site because, let's face it, this one is what we really need most of the time. But what is in this truck which makes it so useful? Well, that's simple. It's like a miniature hospital. Okay? Isn't that great? And to help me learn everything about this truck, there's Emily here to help me. Hello, Emily. Now, Emily is a volunteer firefighter. That means she's not a professional. She's here in her free time to help out. That's awesome. Props to you. And also to help us, there's Justin. Hello, Justin. Hi, Kitty. So, Justin is 13 years old. She's learning how to be a firefighter. So, on regular weekdays, she goes to school, to junior high school, and during the weekends, she learns how to save lives. And that's awesome. Props to you too. That's great! And now, the most important piece of equipment in this truck. The stretcher! This is what you use to go get people who aren't conscious anymore most of the time. 
Okay, girls, how do we get this out? Show us! Now, the thing is, firefighter girls are awesome too. They do as much work as the men. So, it kind of rolls out in the first part, you know, just like a sled in a way. Ooh. And then the wheels come down! Which is really important because, you know, otherwise it will fall down. Which isn't great. And now it's my turn! I play the victim! I'm not dead, I'm just unconscious. So, you know, it can happen for many reasons. You know what, I'm really happy to be on a stretcher because I've always wanted to do so. But the thing is, usually it's not a good sign for you to be on a stretcher. Oh, look, I have gloves. <laughs> I feel so cared for. Wow. I feel important. I'm at the center of attention again. And now, back in the truck. Okay, so how does it go from here? I can't see anything. <laughs> My back is... <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Okay, so I am being loaded in the truck. Okay, cool. Well, oh, that's awesome. Whew. And okay, I'm secured. Well, now that I'm all strapped down and everything is great, we're ready to go to the hospital. Great! Let's go! Thank you girls, you were great! Firefighters wear special shiny helmets. It helps you tell them apart from police or ambulance workers. Firefighters don't wear helmets to look nice, no, 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 no. The helmet is very important to keep firefighters safe. It protects them from things that could hurt them like heat or falling objects. Ooh. The helmet also has a special mask to help them breathe when there's smoke or chemicals in the air. Firefighters' helmets have changed a lot over time. They've been made from leather, metal and even plastic. The most famous firefighter helmet is called the F1 and it's really high-tech. Firefighters take good care of their helmets and never eat with it on or put them in strange places. If you see a dangerous situation, you can help by calling emergency services. Now, in case of an emergency, you need to call the 112. That's 112. Call them if you have any doubt on anything, if you need help, if someone is hurt, or something like that, do not hesitate. A life might be at stake. The 112 is a dispatch center. That means, depending on what you need and what you say, they will call or contact different fire stations or stuff like that and contact the police and firefighters to send them to you, okay? And this is the control station. That means Alex here is telling his mates to say, hey, we have a fire, this place, go use this truck! Guys, assembling! And that's it, the team is regrouping and they're going! There, my little brainiacs, you remember Justin, she was just with us in the ambulance. Now, this is what Justin needs to wear as a young apprentice firefighter. She has some big boots which are reinforced and then she has a onesie. Boys and girls in a onesie at all time. And there's also a belt, a big heavy belt and of course the helmet. It's always important to have a helmet in order to protect your head. After all, that's where your brain is. Thanks, Justin, you were great. Woo! See you later. Woo! But what does a firefighter need in order to fight fire? Well, for that, we have Alex to help us. Hi, Alex. Hi, Kitty. So, how are you? Okay, so, first, the gear. We need pants and we need a vest because, see, he's in his regular 
you know, the uniform a firefighter needs to wear at all times. But he doesn't wear that when he needs to fight fire. So, what's there? So, we have a fire-resistant vest and also fire-resistant pants, as well as very strong boots with a reinforced heel, uh, not heel, tip. Because, of course, when you want to save people, you can't run the risk of harming yourself. Otherwise, you're not helping anyone and you're actually putting yourself in danger. So you need as much equipment to make sure you are safe. Wow, he changed really fast. <laughs> I did not expect that. And, of course, the most important part, he looks really buff with his vest. <laughs> Damn, he was buff before, but now he's even stronger. And, of course, you need something to protect your head. And of course, the most important piece of equipment, the helmet. You can't go save someone with your bare head. You need a helmet to protect it and to protect your face from the heat. And of course, a visor, because you know, there's gonna be ashes, there's gonna be cinder flying everywhere and you need that to protect your eyes in order to see better and in order to save people. Ooh, well, good job. And he did all that in about a minute and a half. That's really fast. Thanks, Alex, because that's great. Have a lovely day. Hey guys, it's lunchtime. <laughs>The thing is, you need to eat healthy in order to be strong. As you've seen, they need to work out a lot and they need to spend a lot of energy. And well, I really want that steak. It's my... He's scary with his knife. <laughs> ah. And of course, there's a cafeteria so that they can all eat together. A bon appetit, my friends. <laughs> okay, let's go! Firefighters have a new workplace, the forest. Have you heard of global warming and drought? When the weather is very, very hot, Dry giant fires can break out in the forest. <gasps> Trees can burn faster than houses and firefighters must work very, very hard to put them out. Fire can be quick or fire can be slow. Did you know that fire can burn four times quicker when it's going uphill? Firefighters pour lots of water on the fire to cool it down. Then, they make sure the fire can't spread any further or start again by using lots of different tools. Rain will put the fire out, but until that happens, the firefighters must stay on guard because the soil can still be burning under the ground. You can help firefighters by calling an emergency number if you see a flame burning near trees. Hey there, my little brainiacs! So you know what, since I was a kid, I always dreamed about being a firefighter myself. However, you know, I don't have the muscle mass. But if there's one thing you need to learn, the first thing you need to learn if you want to be a firefighter is how to unravel a hose and, you know, to bring out the fire hose. So let's do that right now. We have my friend here, Arnold. Hi Arnold, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Great! Okay, so Arnold is going to help me because he actually knows how to do this type of stuff and I don't. So, let's go. First of all, you take the hose and you throw it down. A bit like bowling in a way. And then you need to hook it up to the muzzle, which is, you know, where the water comes out, the power, the pressure, where you actually fight the fire. Of course, you need to hook up the hose to the fire hydrant. This is usually put in every city so as to have easy access to water for firefighters. So this is like a uh, jacked up water gun. Danger!
I'm a firefighter and I have power. Well, this is way too much power. How do you do this all day? Whoa. Well, now that we've unraveled the hose, I've been spraying like, you know, a complete idiot. But I am kind of tired, but that's because there is a technique to actually hold one of those. So, what is the technique? Please show us. Right hand, if you're right-handed, under, you wedge it right between your arm and your body, and then, well... Hey there! It's time for the Kitty Quiz! Today we're gonna have three questions all about the world of firefighters. So are you ready? Great! First question. What is the firefighter's key equipment and piece of clothing? Is it A, clean underwear, or B, a helmet? Timer. Ah, time's up, so let's hear your answer. That's right. The key equipment for firefighters is the helmet. Congratulations! The helmet. H E L M E and T. Okay, second question. What helps a firefighter reach high places? Is it A, a supersonic jet? Or B, a ladder. Timer. OK, time's up. Let's hear your answer. That's right. The piece of equipment that helps firefighters reach high points is a ladder with a platform. Congratulations. Ladder. L, A, D, D. E. Ah. Congratulations. Okay, third and final question. Are you ready? What is the number that you need to dial in case of an emergency? Is it A, the 112? Or B, my birth date? <laughs> Timer. Time's up. So, kids, give me your answer. That's right. In case of an emergency, you need to call the 112. 112. 112. 1. 1. 2. Congratulations. You did great today. You are fantastic again. Wow. Isn't this Jeep just a beauty? <sighs> That was a tiring day with the firefighters, but a very fun one, if you know what I mean. And you know what? When I grow up, I really want to be a firefighter myself. If I want to be as strong and muscular as a firefighter, I need to work out. But before that, if you like this video and you want to see more adventures, don't forget to like and subscribe. And here's my tip if you want to be nice and dynamic when you grow old, which is exercise as much as you can. And my favorite way of doing so is dancing. So I hope you're ready for the kiddie dance.